Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are diving into the, the world of a true master, John Singer Sargent. Sargent was born in Florence to American parents who left the United States to live in Europe. He dominated the art scene in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. He was a phenomenal portrait artist, capturing not just likeness, but also the essence and personality of his subjects. And he also painted landscapes, and that's where he could express his art more loosely and apply color and brush techniques with more freedom. But what truly sets Sargent apart is his masterful use of color. And that's the side of his art that I'm going to focus on in this video. By studying Sargent's techniques, we can unlock a world of vibrant expression and a painterly quality in our own work. So grab your brushes, because we are about to dissect the secrets behind Sargent's use of color. This is the first episode of a series of videos focusing on analyzing and studying works created by master artists from the past. I'm going to pick artists that have focused on using color beyond the traditional method of expression. John Singer Sargent is the first of this series. Sargent was an American expatriate artist born in 1856 and known for his portraits and landscapes, capturing the sense of his subject with remarkable vitality and skill. Sargent was more than just a skilled painter. He was a color magician. He understood how to use color to create depth, mood, and a sense of vibrancy that jumps off the canvas. Whether you are a portrait artist or simply fascinated by color, there is a wealth of knowledge to glean from his work. So let's analyze some of his paintings now. Sargent was sought after for his grand manner portraits of the elite. This is one of his portraits, it's called Madame X. And uh, we can you know, see how his portrait work was very formal. The brush strokes are very smooth. The color use is very traditional. We can see some grays coming through the skin tones. But this work is still very much like the, the academic work, very traditional. And then this portrait here is a beauty. He started to add a little bit more interesting brush strokes to his work. So it's the same with this one here. Again, very traditional. He captures the personality of his subject very well. So he was very popular amongst the, the elite, the high society in England, where he lived most of his time. Even though his parents were American, he was born in, in Italy, in Florence, and lived most of his life in England, in Paris. And that's another one of his portraits. We can see that his, his brushwork starts to develop a little bit more. It's a bit looser, the strokes on the background. But the use of color, very similar, very traditional. And there's I'm going to focus on his more spontaneous works. This year in his uh, painting he had done on location. You can see that the difference, you know, the quality of his brushwork and the use of color is different as well. It's not as formal as the, the other portraits. He started to enjoy painting on, on plein air. He was friends with Monet, or the Impressionist artist. He started to be influenced by that style. So you can see how he used warm and cool contrasts, like the, this area here on the drapery, on the clothes of the woman, the greens, greenish grays, in contrast with some warm colors here, some yellow, some orange. This is kind of a blue green. If we look at these and that, they are opposite colors, orange and blue. So he understood that the complementary color concept and how to create beautiful contrast by using those two in low intensity. And his brushwork is so loose here. It reminds me so royal work, Joaquin Sorolla's works, Spanish painter from the same era. 
and again see how the bluish green color is everywhere you all know the clothes the canvas those areas here it's reflected from the background from the landscape so the landscape affects the scenery affects everything that's in it it's a beauty i just love it and then we have a look at another work by him like this one called carnation lily lily rose this is such a beautiful work that was very well received at that time again you can see some color temperature contrast cool and warm colors happening here it's not just one gray You've got a kind of a bluey green gray. Then you've got this more mauve color, like a purplish color. And then you've got the warmer colors in the highlights, like this here, sort of a an orange gray. This orange comes from the lantern color, so that's done on purpose to create harmony and be playful with colors. And then on the skin as well, you know, cool and warm relationships. Slightly greener skin tones here, and then it's pinker and warmer. And the same on the flowers, you got those areas around here, quite greenish, gray, and then the pink in the middle. It's such a beauty. The colors warmer on the face due to the lights coming from the lanterns. And then so on, the, the brush strokes quite loose, quite spontaneous. And then let's have a look at this one. This is such a beauty. I love those um, on plein air paintings because he could capture the movement. He could capture the fleeting light affecting the surfaces. The color use is very similar. Let's have a look at this here. Thick strokes on the highlights. It seems to be smoother on the shadows. That's quite a pattern among those artists. And then very simplified features on this man's face. And um, color contrast, slightly green here, there. Uh, probably the vegetation, you know, the trees reflecting color so he could see it while being there. Good things about painting on location. Your eye can see more than your camera can capture. And you can explore those possibilities. Again, purples and kind of yellow, orange, gray. And then you got a sort of purplish gray here. There's a good control of value and value relationships. For example, the, the shadow shape, which is this one here. It's very simplified. It's just one value, basically. And that's broken down into different hues to create a more interesting shadow instead of just one color. And that's the same for the light, basically one value. And then colors becoming slightly different in hue, depending on what sort of colors reflect there. And the artist can play with this. They can emphasize, they can exaggerate, and that makes it look good. As long as you have good control of value relationship, you'll be fine. And um, we can see the same here, you know, those colors repeating in different tones. And then again here, complementary colors happening. You've got the, the color of the dirt, which is kind of reddish, you know, reddish brown, like burnt sienna, for example. And then you've got the greens here. So having those two complements together, it just emphasizes the beauty of this here. It makes the green look more interesting instead of having everything just green. And the brush strokes are very loose, very spontaneous. It's such a beauty. Love it. And I love the way he captured the light here. It's, it's beautiful. And then another work by him, we can see the influence of the Impressionist style, Impressionist movement at that time. He really enjoyed painting this way. Late in his career, when he was on his 40s and 50s, he stopped getting portrait commissions to focus on painting, on location, on, on capturing those colors, the reflected colors, playing with brush strokes having a looser approach, a more spontaneous, free approach. I love this landscape painted by Sargent. In this landscape, he demonstrates his mastery of capturing the fleeting effects of light. As we notice, you know, the light coming from the left, the way he, you know, he explores brushwork here, thick brush strokes, colors against under colors. It's another painting here. We can see that green repeating there. Um, and then he applies the thick 
highlights and the shadows. The strokes are not as thick as this. So he could play with different colors there, you know, the greens and reds in muted versions, of course. That's the beauty of it. It's controlling the saturation of, of your color. Instead of going with a highly saturated color, you're learning how to mute it, how to create a colorful grays instead of saturated colors. So you got blues and oranges, all complementary colors happening here in grayish versions, in soft version. See, this is beautiful as well, the way he painted the whole mountain with this here, the dark color, and then he came back and applied the, this highlight on top of it. It's beautiful. You look at the whole picture, you can see the, the magic. And that's the same here, starting with a simple layer, dark colors and grays, and then applying that yellow, bright color, orange, green on top of it to create this effect of light here. And sky as well, very spontaneous, thick strokes on the clouds. It's very loose. Look at this beauty here. You can feel it. You can see the movement. You can see the energy of his brush strokes. And then the, the blue is a bit smoother, not as thick as the clouds. So definitely creates a hierarchy of shapes of dominance. And the way he employs a variety of brush strokes and color temperatures to convey the shimmering quality of sunlight dancing on those surfaces is just, just amazing. It's just masterful. Let's have a look at this work by Sargent. The environment reflecting colors on the subject. See this woman's clothes. It's, it has that green, you know, that green that he used on the background, on the on the vegetation reflected on her colors, on her clothes in the shadow. And um, again, the same pattern, you know, thick strokes on highlights, thinner strokes on the shadows, smooth on, on the woman's face. Very, very lovely uh, texture here. So that's where he could loosen up more uh, all the background areas, foreground vegetation, the landscape, and then a little bit more controlled on the subject's face in skin areas. That's a beauty. This is another work that's stunning. Look at this, same sort of pattern here. Thick strokes on the highlights, fleeting light captured in the colors reflected, you know, those purple gray colors, uh, yellow, purple, gray, opposite colors on the color wheel. So they complement each other. And then red on this woman's dress, lots of greens around it here. Red and green, complementary colors, purple, yellow, all the two complements. So that creates a beautiful work. And um, loose brush strokes, reflections of the sky on the water in everywhere. Even the red here is not that um, highly saturated red straight from the tube. He controlled the colors in a way that's masterful. It's more powerful than using the red straight from the tube. Probably okay for some areas, there is no problem, but areas like shadows, in the transition colors, we definitely need to, to combine colors to create a more realistic and pleasant, harmonious look. He also painted watercolors as well. And so this is one of them, the use of color, very free. Complementary colors happening again, colors that tend to red and green together. Purple and yellow, blues and oranges and so on. Green and red again. This is something that um, the impressionist artists applied a lot, you know, that the power of um, complementary color contrast is influenced by the impressionist artists who were around at his time, at his time, and they were his friends. And that's another watercolor by Sargent. That's just a section of a painting, but we can see that same use of color you know, with the greens and reds and purples, yellows, very, very similar. See here and there, contrast, cool shadows, warm lights, and so on. So it's basically um, applying the cool and warm contrast, cool and warm color relationship in complementary color relationship. Greens and reds, purples yellows, orange, blue, 
that what it was more um, present in his work. Analyzing Sajan's work offers us valuable insights into the mastery of color. His ability to manipulate color in light was unparalleled, creating vibrant and dynamic compositions that continue to inspire us artists today. Studying John Singer Sargent's work not only allows us to appreciate his artistic genius, but also provides valuable lessons in the art of color. Join me next time as we continue our exploration of the masters of painting and how they used color. If you enjoyed this, please do me a favor. Leave a comment below letting me know what other masters you'd like to see featured next time. Remember to subscribe for more artistic adventures. For more in-depth tutorials, check my online courses page on my website or by clicking the link below in the description area. Until then, keep creating and experimenting with color in your own work. Thanks for watching and happy painting!